like it or not, here we are. <laughs> Sorry, I had a funny look on my face. He was being silly. I wasn't being silly. I was being honest. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's Friday. Yay. No camping this weekend. Nope. We camped last weekend. I don't think we told them. Uh, no, we probably do. Well, I don't know. I mentioned it in my... in my. I wasn't in that video. The Digital Tuna video. I wasn't in that Digital tuna. What am I? Wow. Thinking? <laughs> no, it, it's it's like the tuna Arnie, tuna Arnie, tuna Arnie, tuna Arnie, tuna Arnie, tuna Arnie, tuna Arnie. <laughs> no, we went camping with my mom and stepdad, but they had an RV and it was an RV park with a tent area. <laughs> so instead of camping, like you think of camping in like meadows and bunnies and and wildflowers and things there like were this, prairie dogs. There were prairie dogs. We were camping and basically. Weeds and on top of gravel. In a parking lot. In a parking lot, basically. A dirt parking lot. The tent section of the parking lot. I didn't sleep. But that's over with. It's done. Next time we go camping, we'll go to where we really want to go. Yes. Um, Hi. What am I wearing? Did you see? No, I didn't. I was assuming you were wearing your sub because I saw you wearing that earlier today. No, I changed. Wow. It's exciting. Close your eyes and... Okay, one crown. Is it the is it the twisted lug caravel? No, no, it's your omega. Uh, here. E, there it is. Yay, Omega. There it is in all its glory. I am still wearing the the Tunarni. Tunarni. I'm still wearing <laughs> the Tunarni. Okay, I guess I can start. Might as well. From Smucker's Tea. Is it possible to re-chrome watch dials and watch parts? The Watch Repair Channel did a video where he refinished a vintage Seiko dial silvering. In theory, um, if you have a way to... I mean, they did it in the first place. If you have the rig to do that kind of plating, sure. I've tried in the past using silver replating solutions to basically... They'll, they'll take base metal and they'll plate it over with silver, and it does actually work. It's not a great solution, but it does work. The only thing that worries me is that over time, because it's silver, it will patina to black. Um, I don't know of any other options right now, but there are people that do replating. From Bigfoot Willie. Hi, I love your videos. I have an original 1984 turtle, and it needs a new battery and a treatment like you did here. Whatever you did. It was a video or a restoration in the 6309-7049 dive watch. I do not need a new crystal, though. I was curious about how much it would cost to get the same treatment without changing the glass. If you could please let me know. I'm on a budget, but since this is my dad's old Navy diver watch, I would love to get it going. My brother and I both followed my dad into the Navy also, so we're truly a Navy family. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, well, I have a question first. You say you have a 6309, but that it needs a battery. Um... If you look at your watch, does it have, is it a quartz watch? Is it a quartz diver? Um, what's the model number on the back? Does it say 6309 or does it say 7548? If you could look, that would be a good first start. Okay, from Brandon Lau. Hi, Spencer. When will your next watch sale be coming up? Wondering if you have the speed timer 6139 or the... Kakume available? Did I pronounce it right? I believe so. Cool. Um, I don't know when the next watch sale is going to be. It's The usual deal is that if you're looking for a model, you're looking for something, write me and ask me if I have it. Uh, I have watch sales when it sort of occurs to me to have one. On the first model, the 6139-8020, um, that's the one with the, the, the tapered steering wheel bracelet thing with the big holes in it and they're sort of a silvery blue they don't have a bezel or a tacky ring i have like i i think i have a very good one uh but it needs to be restored um so if you're looking for something write me uh rather than necessarily waiting for me to magically pop up with a a watch sale that might they be happen good. at random <laughs> like whenever i'm like i have too many watches i don't know i might be selling my um my 6139 6020 pulsations my doc chrono it's beautiful and I'm very proud of the job they did on it, but I know me, I know that I won't wear it a whole lot, so that's one that's definitely available. It's ready to go right now. Well then. Um, from David Shoup. 
Just picked up a DTU. Do you know how to swap out the crystal? The DTU he's asking about is the Vietnam watch with the one piece parkerized case. Mm -hmm. um, those are those are removed and actually no actually and the next question is a response to him. Oh, okay, it's from Andrew Warner. It's probably best left to a watchmaker. I bought the watch in this video from Spencer and then got my watchmaker to service it. I think they use a tool with lots of metal figures on it for want of a better word, the and then pull it out from front so you can't remove it from behind. Thanks. Ugh, oh, I think I think my tool was stolen. Uh-oh. Sebastian stole his tool. Sebastian did steal my tool. Now that I think of it, I remember him seeing it. Uh, yeah, use a crystal puller. It's it has a a ton of fingers, and you is that the claws? Yeah, the claws. Oh, I know where it is. Where's that? Upstairs. Anyway, you tighten it down, and it and it and it, and it pushes in. It um, contracts. It squishes the the crystal enough to get the circumference to drop, so you can pull it out of the watch. Um, but I mean, I don't. Are you looking to just change the crystal? And so, if that's the case, um, yeah, you could probably pull that off. But you'd also need a crystal press in order to to get that to work. Uh, when Sabrina comes back, we'll, she'll show you that tool. Wait, I hear her. There it is. So this deal, as you. As you unscrew it, as you unscrew it, the, the the fingers open up to the point that you can get it around the crystal that you want, and then you crank it down, and the fingers come in, and they and they they crank in like so, and that's how it works. It's it's not a tool I use a terrible off. No to, wonder why you weren't freaking out that it was missing. I almost never use these. Um, it's rare for me because this is more for like Swiss watches and stuff for, cause mm -hmm. this is only for acrylic crystals, ones that you can compress. This doesn't work for our crystals at all. Oh, okay. Uh, and if, oh, people have asked me about my tools. This one is Vigor made in Switzerland. So it's not a Bergeon or anything, but it's Vigor and they're a good brand. From Amin Reviews. Love these videos. I learned so much. Question for a future mail call. What is the best way to store old vintage Seiko watches to keep them away from the effects of moisture? I have some divers that I will service in the future to give new seals, etc. In the meantime, I want to protect them from the black funk. My home is particularly humid, but even hot showers put some moisture in the air. Um, I had one customer once who used to live in Jakarta. And he had terrible problems with humidity. Even on watches that had been rebuilt and had fresh seals, they would still get moisture inside of them. He actually went so far as to have, he was able to find a watch case that actually had a built-in dehumidifier, crazily enough. And that's what he had to do. During the monsoon season, the watches went into there and they just stayed there. Um, another way you can do it, though, if you don't have that available to you, is um, a refrigerator's extremely efficient dehumidifiers if you have a modern refrigerator. Uh, and so that's what, what, the, what kind of refrigerator are they supposed to have? I don't know. I have no idea. What do I know? <laughs> when I went into a pool with a digital watch and I wasn't paying attention, he told me to put it in the fridge and it worked as a dehumidifier. The, it, it did the job, right? Mm -hmm. That watch still exists, by the way. Um, so that's what I would suggest in the short term. But I do know that there are watch boxes that have dehumidifiers. Yeah, you don't want to keep all your watches in the fridge. <laughs> End up making a watch and peanut butter sandwich. Yes. From Michael Sands, great video as always. In terms of submitting questions for these, what's your preferred met method? Comment here on YouTube or direct email or what? Uh, either works fine. This was a comment on YouTube, and so that's how it got here. From the wrong stuff one. If you like poly watch, try Flitz polish. You can get ten times the amount for the price of a tube of poly watch, and it works just as well on crystals, cases, you name it. Have used it on my watches for years. Uh, I looked it up and I found it. Um, uh, and yeah, you can get a five ounce tube for like twenty bucks, which is great. I'm gonna order some and, and give it a whirl because poly watch is pretty dear. Uh, from Tony C, 
Thank you, Spencer and Sabrina. I always learn something new from your videos. I didn't know you had to use UV light to cure the glue that holds the Cyclops and Crystal together. Sabrina, I wish you had taken your watch off and held it up for the camera so I could see it better. That's why I did that today. That's a Mariner. Oh, you know what? I think you're right. I think you're right. I think we do need to be the opposite way because this, you're in shadow right now because okay. I'm blocking your light. It's all good. Oh, okay. We're moving again. This is what we did the last time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that Submariner really looks nice on your wrist. Thank you. I too had a... Ah, it's better. A nag app that reminded me to drink water. I still use it. It worked well for three weeks. I got tired of the nagging and deleted it. I still use it. <laughs> yep, she keeps her phone buzzes in the same sound. That doesn't mean I successfully drink three liters of water a day. But, there. Was uh, there a question in there somewhere? No, but I actually am happy you put it there because then I said that's why I held my watch up. Mm. Okay. Um, on the UV Cure Cement, yeah, that's the way that that stuff works. Um, it's used all the time in optics, like uh, binoculars, vintage binoculars, like that set of submarine binoculars from Good World job. War II. Thank you. Um, they have multi-part prisms that are put together in order to make sure that the, 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 the light, that there's no, you don't have any problems with glass and imperfections or anything else like that use the uv cure cement and all the elements are held together dump mm. <laughs> uh from romy 360 hi spencer i'm a bit of a collector when it comes to seiko Andy digitals specifically the h601 series of watches wow i have well over 50 of them yes wow. you read that right most of them are ones I bought with good movements and circuits intact and working. Let me know if you need something. Thanks for the video. Anything digital is interesting. Talking about the H601s, I've had problems in the past getting the chronograph button to unstick or they are not working well at all. I've never attempted taking the buttons off, but will in the future. I think it's the C-clamp that may be hard to take out and get the buttons out. Uh, yeah, those little C-clips, they're kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, you have to... You basically, because they're incredibly tiny and they're also sort of spring-loaded on where they are and you have to get in there. I'd get in there with two teeny tiny little screwdrivers, little teeny tiny jeweler screwdrivers, and I push down on both sides simultaneously. And the most of the time that works fine, but the C-clip can have a tendency to go boink and launch off. So I do it inside a really big Ziploc bag, like a big uh, freezer bag, so that if it does go flying, I can get it. But it's big enough, I can get both my hands in there. That's what I do. You forgot the light, too. That's why it's so dark. Oh, really? Mm hmm mm. From Philip Fitchu. Uh, I was at a local shop yesterday and saw the Arnie. They're nice. A bit larger than I thought it would be. And the way the Annie and Digi readouts are synced together is sick. My main watch is my modded SKX173. Easily my favorite SKX. They look so nice and are a little less common. Also, they're made for the U.S. or was it North America? So there's no K or J models. The lollipop is in the correct place. It's unique and I love it. Yeah, I have to. I, I keep thinking I want to bring back an SKX-173 because they're a recreation, basically, of the 6309-7290. Um, they're cool. I need to get one. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this so far. It's still on the wrist. From Robert Sanchez, got my Ernie yesterday and it is nice, comfortable, and looks great. However, the ever-loving misaligned bezel is present. Great show, y'all enjoyed it. Thanks. Yeah, I, I don't know what's up with Seiko and these misaligned bezels. I mean, even this one, as I said in my review, has a slight misalignment on the chapter ring. Um, on the bezel, the bezel insert, these things have two clicks per minute. Uh, and so you can, and also it's got a fair amount of slop, so... Like right now, it's perfectly aligned, but I could, I could move it slightly, and it will not have clicked over, and it's misaligned. So, but if I crank it backwards, it's perfectly aligned. I don't on this. I still don't know why that's misaligned because it's. What do you mean? Let me see. Uh, hang on, just one second. If you look at the slash, uh, the 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 ch the 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 minute mark there below the the thirty. Oh God, you're right. Not aligned, but yet at three and nine, it is aligned, and at 12 for that matter. I don't, is that a misprinting? Is the other number misprinted? Well, actually, if you look at it, huh? 
Well, it I, I can't... I don't know if that's multiple parts. In the original, it was multiple parts. You have the chapter ring bit, and then you have this other lower bit that has these... the, the ten... the five-minute marks on it. And I wonder if that is misprinted because the chapter that chapter ring mark is actually perfectly aligned with the chapter ring mark is perfectly aligned with the marker the six marker but not with that um not with that 30 minute marker down there 30 minute text hmm i don't know i don't know what seiko's doing i don't know why they haven't cured that you'd think that with engineering you'd be able to get it right where you need it to be and there it would be they certainly did it in the past from cmb so tempted but looks too thick for my wrist i believe the h357 5200 silver wave was the first i have two both from 1981 i have a few baby arnies and the earliest is 1982 the silver wave which was produced before the baby arnie is slightly larger but with smaller hands and is an odd design but cool then he moved to the h601 version in the 90s and the h803 from the around 2000 mm -hmm. yeah in fact I, one of those h357 silver waves went off on ebay just like two or three days ago uh and i was looking at it, it sold for 36 dollars um and it was it was definitely it looked like this it was definitely in the same vein um h357 is a good movement um it's all metal uh that's it's a really good movement but it has no light um but i i wasn't really aware of those but yeah the handset is really small on that like not even just short incredibly thin um but they're they're neat they're pretty cool from Barry I. Goldberg on Instagram. That's another way you can ask a question. That's true. Just checked out your review. Very cool. Had a chance to hold one in the flesh and really dig it. Still talking the, about the Arnie. But the one thing that gives me pause, and I don't believe you addressed it in your vid, was the Made in China signage emblazoned on the case back. It just doesn't seem right for a Seiko of this caliber and historical purpose. Oh, well. Really? Yeah, it says, it says Made in China. Why right? was it Made in China? They make a lot of their stuff in China. Hong Kong is China. Oh, uh, sorry. You know, I, don't I know. feel stupid. No, no, but I don't even know. I am an American. I don't know that this is made in Hong Kong, but it's like... Wouldn't it say made in Hong Kong? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that because they... But, you know, China's the center for manufacturing. Back in the day when I was a kid, stuff that said made in Japan was considered garbage. And then their stuff got better. And then it was made in Taiwan that was garbage. And then it's... You know, yeah, but it should be made in Japan at the factory, I would think. You know, every company I'm, I'm assuming has issues with labor costs. It's oh. cheaper to have something made in China. I wish all of Seiko's stuff was made in Japan, but they opened the Hong Kong factory in 1981. Well, Barry I. Goldberg, I totally understand what you're you're saying. I get it. It does. It'd be nice. Yes, it'd be great if these were still made in Japan. But you know, they were designed in Japan. That's something. Um, I don't know. I don't think about it because there's not a thing I can do about it. My iPhone was built in China. What are you going to do? From Randy Novick, I got the patty version and I like it. My two problems with it are, one, these rubber straps never have the holes in places that it gives me a comfortable fit. Aha, and see, that is where your watch steward strap comes in because you can adjust this like to the point that it's like insanely perfect just for you. The second, two, the second hand does not tick to the indices. Um, this one does. It's dead on spot. Um, I have run through the hand alignment procedure in the manual, and it still doesn't help the situation. It's not so bad. For number one, I have to find an amendable flat PVD Jubilee bracelet. And for number two, I need to not look so close at the second hand. Otherwise, I'm happy with it. Wore it over the weekend to muck out stalls and groom horses and get muddy and nasty and it hoses off nicely and it's a pleasure to wear. The features are great and I like the look. I don't have to worry about banging it up because it will only add character and I'm gentle with my watches anyway. Glad you got one. Glad you like it. I was prepared to hear a litany of disappointments from you and was surprised at this review. Hey, so Everyone I... was shocked. Everyone was shocked. <laughs> Me too. Uh, yeah, I don't know why that's the misaligned thing. How misaligned? Like, here's my SU-019. And this one of them, it is it is misaligned. It doesn't hit the markers perfectly. It's ever so slightly off, just by a hair. If I wanted to crick it, I could pull the movement, drop the hand, 
redo it. That's not that hard to do. But I guess it, it's all a matter of how, how off yours is. Does this someone say made in China? Is it made in China? Where is this made? I can't see it. I need your eyes. Movement Japan. Movement Japan. Sapphire crystal, stainless steel, air diver. It doesn't say. Doesn't say where it's made? Nope. Huh. Interesting. I wonder why then they branded this one made in China and this one doesn't say where it came from. Huh. Interesting. What a great watch design. I still wish they had one of these with a case at like 41 millimeters instead of this giant thing. But this literally, this exact watch just ever so slightly smaller. Ashton likes it. I know. It's his lovey. Uh, my brain just died. Did it? Yeah. Because oh. I'm afraid it's going to start raining. I have laundry on the line. Uh, from Lane Edwards. Awesome comparison. Thanks, Spencer. However, I was told by multiple Seiko ADs that Seiko's solar tech was aided by Citizen. I wonder if that's true or just a way to help Seiko sales. Any thoughts? Uh, my thoughts are I sure hope that that's true because Seiko Solar Tech uh, is nowhere near as good as Citizens as far as I understand it. Um, that'd be great. And if the authorized dealers are saying that, then awesome. That's great news, especially at this price point because if they're using Citizen Tech, um, Citizen Tech is good for decades versus Seiko, which is good for months. <laughs> Um, for Mark Perioni 69 I really need one or two. Hey, Spencer, long time since I've seen your vids. Guy from Brazil here. So, I was going to post only this comment, but I decided to watch the video first. It's got to be one of your longest ones. We almost hit an hour once. How long was that one? I don't remember. Oh, okay. Now about the watch. I totally love it. It sure does justice to the original. And the hands moving to set the time, that was crazy. The original doesn't have that. And shouldn't the bezel insert fit the original so we could all buy original inserts for our old ones? It's funny because I just got home from the gym, removed one of my Arnie's. My first one was bought in January 87 on Friday Harbor, Washington. Sat down on my computer to relax a bit before a shower and dinner and saw this. I was just thinking about buying one this week, but at $500, I also think the price will go down a bit. So I'll wait to get another SRP turtle for now, one of the black ones. Anyway, great video as always. Thank you for doing this review on this watch. I really don't like this solar tech and I'm not happy about having to change a capacitor in a few years, but if we can't have it with a normal quartz battery, solar it is. I swore I would never buy a Seiko Kinetic or solar. And now they come out with this. And by the way, wouldn't a normal battery fit where the capacitor sits? Whew. That's a long one. That's a long one. <laughs> uh, you could put a normal battery into it. Yeah, but the problem is, is you have, then you have a solar cell trying to recharge a non-rechargeable battery and it will blow up. Um, the inserts will not swap back and forth. I just did a rough comparison. It looks like that's about a millimeter and a half greater diameter, so we will not drop in. So that's, that. it is what it is. Um, I don't know. I love them. I think they're great. I think Seiko did a great job. I mean, there's a real elegance and restraint to the original. And there's a reason why people love them. But I mean, I really feel that Seiko captured the spirit of them in this new one. From Blonde Strats More Fun. Uh, I can't be the only guy who would love to see a reissue of the Baby Arnie Adventure with the new tech, maybe a 40 to 42 millimeter. Great video. I I have often thought that. Um, the Adventurer, which by the way is an H556-5029. H556-5029. The Adventurer, I think it's just a great look. I think it's a really nice looking watch. Um... I love the two-tone of it. I think the elements are balanced. Yes, if they took the whole watch and went just up a bit to like 41 millimeters, I think it'd be really nice, totally wearable. I think it's a great sport diver. I wish they'd do it. I think I think that would be super cool. I think that'd be kick-ass. 
from Inspector. Nice review and brilliant comparison to the original. Quality control issues are still there. My chapter ring is 100% aligned with the dial. However, the bezel is out of alignment. Man, do you know how to get it aligned? Do I remove the shroud, pop off the bezel, and soak it in warm water so that the insert glue is loose and then re reallocate it? Please let me know. Cheers. I uh, no, these things, they're not, well, the originals were not glued in. They were really, really tight force fit, uh, friction fit. And you would have to use a kit. You pull the bezel, pull the shroud, pull the bezel, pop the insert out, put the, after marking where it's supposed to go, and then you put it in by dropping in the, the side with the, with the pip first so it's aligned properly. And then you have to very carefully work the insert back in. If these new ones are glued in, then... I don't know. I doubt that water is going to do anything, though. I'm sure that you'd have to use some kind of, like, something serious and chemical to get it off. I don't know how much is it misaligned. And I would also run it around, keeping in mind this thing has two clicks per minute, and run it around and see if you can get it to stop where it's supposed to be. From Aaron Costello. One thing hey, Aaron. I, one thing I always hated about the original H558 H601, the tiny fiddly buttons. I am HO. They were about half as big as they should have been. Seiko has certainly corrected them with the air sole. Air sole. <laughs> I like that. You do? <laughs> yeah. Now I need them to make. Would it be our sole? Our sole. Yeah. Our sole. Our sole. <laughs> Does this look like an our sole to you? <laughs> I failed. Did you really? Yeah. Anyway, big buttons. Uh, now I need them to make me an orange one on an SBBN015 style bracelet. Man, if they made an orange style version of this, people would lose their minds if they made an orange one of these. I bet you I bet you we'll see it. What's it with Seiko and orange? I don't know. It's a thing. Okay. From Smucker's T, Seiko did a good job with this one, but it's too large. The SKX is the largest watch I can wear. This watch just isn't small enough for my wrist. Speaking of the SKX, I wish Seiko would do a non-cushion case ISO diver like the 6309-7290 that was affordable. Well, I mean, get an SKX-173. It's the modern recreation of the 6309. It's got a modern movement, uh, but it has the same hand and dial setup. That's the one to get. From Paul G, <clears throat> brilliant mate. People moan about the made in China. Bloody iPhones are made in China and sell by the millions. It's just, I expect that from Apple. Um, Say she who has an iPhone and an iPad and a MacBook Air because they're evil. So I expect them to use slave labor. I thought higher of Seiko for not doing that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I didn't even think about it. And you'd think that I would have. Yeah, especially being married to me. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I, I don't know, because I have to deal all the time with so many of these Seiko watches that were made after the Sioux and the, and the uh, Diney plants, all that production moved to, to Hong Kong and Singapore. I don't really think about it. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, it happened in 81. I didn't know that. Yep. Now I do. Mm. So now I'll stop thinking about it. No, you can think about whatever you want. I don't know. I just don't like it. I'm amazed you just didn't get mad at me. I just gave you permission to think about whatever you want. Why would I get mad at you? I don't know. Because you gave me permission? Because I didn't have permission? Because you don't need no man to give you permission about nothing. No, I don't need no man. I am woman. Hear me roar. Or, okay. Or hear you snore. You were snoring. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to tell you. I don't know, because I thought it was funny. I thought it was the dog. <laughs> you snore all the time. I know, but I'm big and old and fat. <laughs> I can't read a question now. My face is all red. Uh, which question were you? Uh, let's see. Oh, right here. Spencer, whenever well, you... didn't you say who that's from. Stephen, UK1. Spencer, whenever you've said anything negative about a watch, <laughs> I have found that I have agreed with you. I really like other people's opinions, especially when they are different to mine. I find it's a learning opportunity. I'm intrigued with this new art. You know, I'm as shocked as anybody that I liked it as much as I did. Um, I don't know. They just... I don't... Because I have ideas. I can see in my head exactly how I would do something. This is how I would do blank. I could The whole thing, it's not even a, a process of like trying to sort of come up with the design it like it like emerges from my imagination 
done, like it's finished. And then I see the reality that somebody else came up with and I'm frustrated because it doesn't look the way I think it should look, but it's just my opinion, it's not reality. And I'm absolutely, pop, absolutely positively wrong, lots of the time. Sorry. From Dave Nolan, he had these new ones look like cheap Chinese junk. The tomb shroud looks like it's made of cheap plastic printed on a 3D printer. You know what was cheap plastic printed on a, not a 3D printer, but cheap plastic? The originals. These original shrouds. Mm -hmm. If they get, it's like a, it's a crapshoot. Um, sometimes they'll deteriorate. A lot of times they'll deteriorate and they just shatter. You just hold them in your hands and they just come to pieces. This is an original shroud, but it's one of the reasons why I almost never wear this watch. Because you can hit them wrong and they just book and they just crack. There are decent pieces remade now you can get aftermarkets that are decent but this is cheap and plastic that's 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 the problem with this this is beautifully printed it's it's nicely shaped the the original design was clearly they did a good job and the material whatever the material is i think it's a plastic but it's quite hard it almost clicks i don't know what it is Once you break it i'm not yeah <laughs> It's plastic. Yeah, it's plastic. But it's nicely done. It's beautifully made. It doesn't look like some sort of hacked up thing, sort of pushed out of a printer. It, It's nice. It's nicely designed, and it, the fit and finish is excellent. I'm a fan. I think it's higher quality than that. From Saul Brook. Hi, Saul. One more reason why Seiko hits this on the nose as a reissue that was worth the effort. It's not some limited edition that costs as much as a used car. That is a very, very good point. And the fact that this is a, quite affordable. I mean, this one I traded for the equivalent of less than $400 and for a brand new just released watch. And there it is. It means I can wear it without fear. It means that you don't have to baby it or and it's not a limited edition. You don't have to worry about scratching it up and... It's, it, you don't have to spend lots and lots and lots of money on it. It's, it's, it's great because it, it fulfills the purpose of the original, which was to be an, an all-terrain sports watch that you could wear in every situation. And, you know, and the original was, you know, real tough and manly for its day. And this does this, it fills the same, it fulfills the same purpose. It just amazes me how um, the original looks so much smaller now. Like it yeah. was on Arnie's wrist and it was like manly Arnie looks perfect size. Yeah, but, but this thing was a normal size watch for its day and now it looks tiny. Yeah. But I mean, the thing is with the other big reissues, especially the expensive ones, is it always felt to me like a, they, they sort of had devolved into being fashion watches. Like the reissue, the 6159, it's a luxury diver, four or five thousand dollar watch. And the originals were just meant to be a a, a deep a professional dive watch. That's what they were for. Uh, and so the reissues, in my opinion, in those cases, don't fulfill the purpose of the original. Whereas this does. It does exactly that. This absolutely fills the purpose of the original, and um and as such is a true continuation of it. And price is certainly a part of that. It's affordable, man. You can you people can buy one, and then you can wear it without thinking. I mean, I could wear this. This can be a knock around watch. Why not? I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, do you have any last thoughts? No. Are you sad? No. Hmm. I'm just waiting for the next thing. Yeah, the next thing. The next thing is cleaning the cat box. Oh. <laughs> I thought you meant pizza night. It is pizza night, but the next thing for me is cat poop. Very, exciting stuff very exciting okay well that's it thank you so much happy friday and uh if you have any more a lot of people have real lots of opinions on this arnie we can discuss it again next week so if you have thoughts about the arnie put them up there wait what are they calling it the arsehole <laughs> right you i i like it better than than the uh, uh, two narnie two narnie no i like arsehole arsehole you yes. do yes Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.